Right, our guest is a familiar face and voice to everyone that listens and watches this show. Uh, last time we caught up with him, he was sunning himself in St. Kitts at the Under-19 World Cup. But we are now into June. We are into white ball cricket in England. And that means only one thing. It means the return of Charles Dagnall. That's quite the build-up, Moats. I really is. In <laughs> fact, when you, when you um, reminded me of when we last spoke, I, I was just transported back to clear waters and blue skies and sandy beaches and thinking, this is not a bad gig, this. It's quite good fun. I could get used to it. And now, now we're, like, layered up. We're, we're coming towards the heart of summer, but it's still two jumpers out there when you're in the Sky Sports pod oh. and the wind is whistling through on the south coast and you're just huddling up to each other to try and keep warm. But, yeah. Uh, it's lovely to be back and always good to talk to you and uh, yeah looking forward to it were you in um just whisking you back to St Kitts was that under you must have I think it was under Covid wasn't it because you couldn't go out yeah. you could look at the beaches but you couldn't set foot on them was that it well what we were allowed to do and and look and I understand it from the ICC's perspective because the last thing they want to do is put a load of money into an event and it be decimated by by Covid so we were still under relatively stringent rules. We were allowed within the hotel resort itself. So you could go, to, you know, on a day off, you could go to the pool and you can have a drink and you can eat at the restaurants and all of that sort of stuff. But we had to quarantine for four days, I think it was, on our arrival in St. Kitts. And then once we'd done that, we were free to roam around. But we weren't allowed to go outside of the hotel. The only places... We were allowed to go with the cricket ground and back to the hotel or resort. When we moved to um, Antilla, then we were allowed within the resort, which did have a nice little beach and a bay and stuff like you could have a little kayak on, on a day off or whatever. Um, but what cracked me up was on that trip was the fact that we had to fly from St. Kitts to Antigua, a journey I'm sure you have done in the past. Uh, however, well, I, I had never done it, didn't realise that it's 15 minutes. And so, <laughs> so we could have got a jet ski and been there quicker because we had to go to the uh, we had to go to the airport. We then had to wait for the other sides who were joining this charter flight. So we were actually in the airport waiting for about four hours. <laughs> Once we then got on the plane, <laughs> the announcement came over, well, we're going to be travelling at a height of 10,000 feet. I'm thinking, what's the point? You can travel <laughs> at a height of 50 feet. And would, it would still, what's the point in going up that far? Anyway, then we got down and, and then we had to wait for the coaches to pick us up. So for a 15-minute flight, we're actually, the journey took us eight hours to do that. And it was the most bonkers thing. Anyway, as I mentioned, we could have all hired a speedboat, thrown the suitcases in the bag, and been over there and been sipping pina coladas by the time we'd actually uh, uh, we'd actually got there. But anyway, be that as it may, it was great fun, great fun, <laughs> and some good cricket from what I remember. Yeah, really um, good. in that tournament, really as well. good. Yeah, we, I mean, India always strong. What was interesting to me was that India, because of the amount of of and strength and depth of their uh, pathways, you're only allowed to play in one under nineteen World Cup if you're India. So you know that that was this this group of players only chance so if you were 16 years old you're not allowed to play in the in the following one just because um but they were brilliant they really were we saw players such as Diavol Bravis from South Africa who then went on and got himself an IPL contract at, uh, off the back of that pretty much I think it was 200,000 pounds or 200,000 dollars that he got and, and performed brilliantly for, for Mumbai um we saw from England's perspective couple of players who are starting to perform in a T20 Blast this year, Tom Press, the captain, uh, who, who was part of the Hampshire side last year. Uh, Jacob Bethel, who I like. I think this kid's a real player. Uh, he's at Warwickshire. We've not seen the best of him at Warwickshire this year, but he decimated South Africa in uh, the quarterfinal, I think it was. It was blistering innings he played. And then young Rahan Ahmed, who I'm a big fan of, uh, the leg spinner from Leicestershire, who is doing really well in this T20 blast. So it's great to see these kids who you genuinely haven't seen a great deal of perform in that um, environment and then come back and move on to, you know, they're big guns in that environment in under-19 cricket. And then they're joining the group of professional cricketers and the small fish in that huge pond, if you like. And to see them perform is, 
It's fantastic. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to watch their graduation through the ranks and to see how they perform. But Rahan is doing wonderfully well. So, yeah, really fascinating to watch it from that perspective. I know Butch has done it um, over the last couple of tournaments. And, uh, and it just gives you one uh, to keep an eye on, which is always fun. It's one of those where you probably look at a photo in five years' time and think, blimey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, some of these under 19s, there was one I called George Bell. Plays for Lancashire. Goodness, he can play. I mean, he really can play. And, um, I mean, someone should take a look at getting him on loan, I think, if you know, because he's a real talent. And he honestly, Moose, he can't have looked more than 13. You know, those sort of <laughs> rosy cheeks and flush and, and just sort of... And then when you see him go out and bat and he's lap sweeping and reversing and drilling it down the ground way into the stands at the Civiv Stadium at Antigua, and you're like, my God. You know, these these young kids who don't look a day out. I mean, they look like they're ready to do the GCSEs, half of them. Um, and have barely have barely touched a razor. Um, and and yet they're performing with skills that are way beyond their years. It's, it's brilliant to watch. Brilliant. So you're over here now, back on home shores. We yes. are in the middle of June. The sun is belting down. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> it's white ball season. We've uh, we've Got off to a flyer with the Red Bull stuff. That's taking a pause. But we've got this um, more of a sensible calendar over the height of the summer with the blast coming first and then the 100. So um, you are back on our, our screens and in our ears uh, with the blast. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. If, I mean, it's, it's bad enough for people having it through one way in their ears and now they get to see a, see a lot more of me as well. So, uh, look, it's... Um, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think the calendar is a little bit more solidified in this in this way. I still think, look, you're never going to please everybody, but I think it looks pretty organised to me. There's a, a batch of championship cricket ahead of the first test match, which we've just seen. Um, and then into white ball cricket, whilst the weather gets a little bit warmer and people can get, uh, you know, crowds down during half terms and that sort of stuff. Um, and then once the T20 blast season has finished, then the 100 will start. And I'm talking about men's cricket here. Of course, the women's starts at the back end of June. Uh, the internationals, the Charlotte Edwards Cup is, is going on right as we speak. Um, and so I think it's a lot more organised, but it's great to be involved in it. You know, it gets, it does, you can't help it. I mean, I do a lot of white ball cricket and you know me, mate, so I, I love all cricket. I don't think one is better than, oh, uh, no, that's a lie. Test cricket, of course, is the pinnacle of any cricket that you play but there's a place for it all and at the end of the day it's a game of cricket and I love all formats and and if there's a game of cricket I'm there um because of the of the nature of a my work but b my outlook I I, I enjoy all formats and seeing and uh, seeing everyone's skills you know I walked on yesterday uh yesterday two days ago um we're at Southampton for the um Hampshire so El Classico uh, Hampshire versus Sussex but walked on whilst uh, the Vipers were playing against the Northern Diamonds in the Charlotte Edwards Cup. And it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. The skills on show, Catherine Brum was there, Jenny Gunn was there, um, you know, Charlie Dean and, and all playing for the Vipers. And this, the skill levels were so good, um, which is not news anymore. And you still want to be wowed by cricketers both male and female and that's what we're doing in, in the t20 blast we've already seen some great performances um some thrilling cricket and yeah we're banging in the middle of it now and i can't wait for uh, for it to continue up until finals day in mid-july which is good you know get one competition finished then start a new one and remember there's a t20 wild card that can be selected for those hundred squads so if anyone does have a really good season and has not been uh, part of selected as part of a hundred squad, there is still an opportunity to do that. And there's a lot of new people that have come to the game over the last couple of years, uh, and just kind of to make it easy for people, even people probably listening to this conversation, um, that want to know the the basic difference. For me, the difference between T20 and hundred can be summed up very very easily. If you are watching T20 cricket. Charles Dagnall has the aviator frames, but the clear lenses. But in the 100, <laughs> it, you can spot it easier because Charles Dagnall is wearing still the aviator frames, but the lenses have gone yellow. 
Yes, yes. That, that, I knew you'd pick me up on this. Yes, there. <laughs> so a lot. Do you know what? It's odd how much those glasses actually resonated with people. Saying, "Where are they?" You know, we've seen you on Sky so far. Where are your yellow glasses? They are my hundred glasses now. <laughs> I have now selected. The problem was I got them, and stupid. <laughs> this is going to sound ridiculous, but everything was yellow. And um, I thought, I've got to have a pair of glasses that I can actually see normally out of. The prescription, you see. Uh, all of my glasses are prescription. So uh, my green ones that I've actually got, which I'm wearing uh, sunglasses in the sunshine when we eventually get it. Uh, and I've got my clear ones now, but my hundred, I mean, I've, I've designated my yellow tinted specs for the hundred. What I will say is that they are very good for seeing at night. Uh, so that's why I, I do a lot of night cricket. Uh, and so, yes, the hundred can be summed up. That's the only difference now. <laughs> it's what glasses I'm wearing. But I tell you what, what the, the hundred and everyone's got their opinions on the hundred. And, and is it, uh, my simple opinion was there's it's full stadiums. There's kids watching cricket. There's people watching cricket and enjoying it. What's wrong with that? You know. What I will say is that the atmosphere and the noise and the electricity, and of course, they've spent a lot of money on it, making it so, but goodness, you can tell the difference in the 100. It is, it's really in your face. Um, I love that. I, I, I love it because it's different and they're, they're trying to do things differently and they have done, you know, the DJs and the live music. And, and I mean, that's right up my street and, and uh, it gets my juices flowing. Um, the hundred, the, the the twenty twenty blast or the T twenty blast is a little bit more quiet, but still of ridiculously high quality. All you get with a hundred is the cream of those players are coming together to play against each other for the hundred. Does the standard rise? Yeah, it does. You can't you can't help that, and we'll continue to do so over the forthcoming years. We've got all the overseas players who are available because COVID didn't let them come last year, and that's for the men and the women, what the 100 did for the women's competition, you cannot measure how big a deal that was for the women's comp and for women's cricket. And I don't think, Moots, this 100 um, has not even tapped anywhere close into the resource of what could lay in wait in the women's game. Really, really. I, 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 a load of clubs, I don't know if Brentwood and Billericay are doing it, but so many clubs now have a women's section. They have girls under 19, uh, under 11s, under 15s. And this is starting to escalate. I was up at South Northumberland Cricket Club in, in, in uh, Newcastle the other day. I was hosting a dinner there with Kevin Keegan. What a dude he is. He was dead good as well. Um, King Kev, the loveliest man. And before the dinner was going on, what was on the outfield? Under 11 girls cricket. I was watching that at club level. And that and, and at the dinner was the women's softball cricket team, um, the adult women. And it was just, I just thought, this is brilliant. And this is what the 100 is going to bring or has brought and will continue to bring. So, uh, you know, you're not going to find a huge amount of negatives. Oh, but Deggers, you're paid to say it's a good cop. No, no, I'm, I'm not paid to say it's good. If something's good, I'll say it's good. If something's bad, I'll say it's bad. But could there be things that are improved in the 100? Yes, absolutely. There are things that could be mended. Can the schedule be fixed? Yes. You know, there's lots of things. But did I enjoy it? Did the people who went enjoyed it? Yeah, they did. And they'll go back and you might get new cricket fans and more cricket fans. And, you know, so there's so many. I'm... I'm, I'm going off on one here i'm ranting moots and my right. apologies we love we love but, rant on this show but, don't worry but but you know i thought it was for all the bad pr and there was bad pr and they did it poorly in my opinion prior to the tech prior to it starting there was a lot that they did wrong but when the cricket started that's what went right very right and it will be a, a better competition this year for it i'm absolutely sure of it I'll get in a plug for, uh, you said about a club level. So at Billericay, we've gone from 0 to 60 in the last 18 months with uh, girls and uh, women's cricket. We, so I'll give a plug to Billericay Blaze, who is our women's... They've got a nickname cricket. and everything. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. D designated kit. We've got Kelly Castle captaining of 
Essex and Vipers, uh, Sunrisers, sorry, Sunrise, not Vipers, Sunrisers fame. Uh, and we've got all kinds of top uh, women players turning out of Billericay to play women's yeah. cricket. Fantastic. Is that not just the best thing? When, oh. when people say cricket is a game for all, it's not words. It is. It's for anybody. And it's for men, it's for women, it's for gay, it's for straight, it's for black, it's for white. It doesn't matter what your orientation is, your creed, colour. It is. It's a game. It's a game. Every game is a game for everybody because we play it for pleasure and enjoyment. And it's not, this is your game and that's my game or whatever. It's for absolutely everyone to see. It's thrilling to me who covers a lot of women's cricket to see what is potentially in the pipeline. It's good now. It's, it's good now. It could be ridiculously good five years' time. When those kids who are playing at 11 years old and turning 16, 17, and have got these skills and have got the coaching at the local club levels and, and pathway levels, etc. Good God knows, it could be. It, you know as well as I what, what, what yeah, potential yeah. there is there. I think you make a really excellent point, um, which I hadn't really thought of before, but I'm sitting here thinking, my God, he's got it. There's been a, there's been a seismic change in the last 18 months of um, viewing cricket, how you watch it. It does, as you just said, fantastically, is that now you will watch a game of cricket. And as you say, it doesn't matter if it's men, women, under 12s, um, ability, disability, whatever, all from whatever country, whatever, because all of a sudden you're watching it because it's cricket, not because of who's playing it. Yeah, absolutely right. It's a game of cricket. Yeah. And, and you know, people like to differentiate. And, and to a certain degree, yeah, you can do. But, you know, I'll get as much of a thrill as you probably will from watching. You know, I, I drive past Charlie Wood Cricket Club. Every, every day and see and just stop for five minutes and have a little watch, see who's playing where, where around where I live and not, just stand on the sideline and just take it all in. People loving the game. And that's the whole point of, of we, you know, I'm selfish. I, I, I've, I mean, I've got ideas, mates, and, I, and I'm brutal with them in that, in the, you know, do I like, do I like athletics? No, not really. I don't watch it, right? Do I like netball? Now, I've watched a game of Loughborough Lightning netball. It was great entertainment. I went to my daughters down there. It was fantastic. But would I rather see netball players playing cricket? Yeah. So why aren't why doesn't cricket turn around and go steal some players? Go to go to the local volleyball club or netball club or go to okay. Loughborough Lightning or who or whoever it is and say, look, throw a ball in the hand and see who we can get. Or athletics, there's no money in athletics, there's money in cricket now. So go and be brutal. Go and get the best women sprinters and long jumpers and high jumpers and pole vaulters and all, go and steal them. I'm selfish for cricket. Now, athletics won't take kindly to that, but that's what I want to do. And, and, try, and, um, and try and find more um, talent out there because now there is something to sell. There is something to sell. There's crowds coming in watching this game. There is more money around, and that is only going to go up especially in the women's game. So, you know, drag, drag players in from wherever you can to either play or just to, to, to learn about the game and love the game and, and, you know, rant over. But I was due a good idea and I was due a good point to make because I've been on your show, what, four or five times and yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure I've not, I've not come up with anything brilliant. So, uh, so, so I was due a decent point. Well, going forward, I'm going to adopt the phrase of looking at the game through yellow-tinted spectacles. <laughs> <laughs> now, usually when we... And you're right, this is about the, the fifth time I think you've been on. We, we, we thank you ever so much for supporting us and entertaining no, I us. I love it. But um, usually there's a four-string bass axe not too far from your clutches. It's so embarrassing, you know. I've got a wall of guitars and I, I don't play it. <laughs> oh goodness me you know if, if the difference between having mark butcher on this this um uh, on on phoenix fm and me 
uh, is that he will have a wall of guitars and can play them to the most ridiculous, you know, wonderful, melodic levels. And I've got a wall of guitars on there, and I just, I just like looking at them because they're fun, they're nice oh, yeah. shapes. And I just, my, my cat strangling sounds that I make from, uh, from, from the bass. Now I'm getting better. I am getting a little bit better. But sorry, I interrupted. It's just like my wall of cricket shirts behind me. None of them been worn by me. I'll give you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear a little bird tells me that um, there's a chance that we might be able to see Charlie Dagnall and his bass guitar in action and in the flesh. Is this true? This is 100% true. Let me give you the story. So myself and my, my good friend, Henry Moran, who works on uh, Test Match Special. I mean, obviously, I don't get to work on TMS that much anymore just due to sky commitments but we're we're solid friends we're firm best friends really um and ages and ages and ages ago we did a load of lip syncing videos on social media and made you know because we were bored um you know driving up and down to to grounds in the car and so we thought we'd we, and we were singing along to music in the car so we thought well we'll just video them anyway they had a, a, a really big response people seemed to like them because we played up to it and all of that but we actually, Henry is a very, very fine lead guitarist. And I'm a very, very average bass player. Um, and so when we toured around like Australia on winter tours with TMS and that sort of stuff, we took to our little travel guitars and rocked in our in the hotel rooms and, and just came over there. Anyway, we said, should we should we get on stage? That, you know, why not? Let's get on stage. And he went, yeah, yeah, quite fancy that. So anyway, this was about two years ago. So we decided that we would do a rock show, a proper classic rock show, where we would go all in. Spandex trousers, massive knee-high boots, makeup, headbands on. We're going to go properly all in and do a proper rock show. There's no point doing it in the back of a pub and, and you know, doing it to back of jokes. We want to do it properly. Now, we were supposed to do this two years ago. And we'd sent a press release out and we've got tickets being sold and all of that sort of stuff. And then obviously COVID hit. Couldn't do it the following year. And so we've resurrected it and we're going to do it again because we're dying to do it. And the, the, the thing is, we just wanted to get on stage and perform a rock show. We're doing it at the 100 Club, which historically wow. is one of London's most historic and iconic music venues. God knows why they're letting us in and doing it there. Because you think of the names that have performed at the 100 Club and you think of the Sex Pistols and the Jam and Oasis and all of these sort of people and they're letting Daggers and Henry perform <laughs> on this iconic stage. So we are... Um, and, we, and because we only want to get on stage, we thought, well, why don't we try and raise some money for a, for a good cause whilst we're doing it? So we priced the tickets at £30, and every single penny of those £30 that you spend on a ticket will go to the Teenage Cancer Trust. Brilliant. So there is the only thing you might have to pay for is a little booking fee, but the £30 you pay is the £30 that the Teenage Cancer Trust gets. Under the posts, an events company who I'm associated with are putting up the money for us to do that. So, you know, that's enabled us to do to raise this money for charity. And we hopefully will raise 300 people can get in. So we're going to raise somewhere close to 10 grand, hopefully something like that uh, for the Teenage Cancer Trust. We've got session musicians coming down to back us up. So basically, that means that, you know, we can turn us down and turn them up, but we might sound all right. Um so my brother, who's a session musician, is coming to drum for us. He's bringing a guitarist and a keyboard player down. And most importantly, we will be having some special guests. It won't be just us. We will be doing the first lot, but we've got a load of special guests hopefully coming down uh, to do some stuff. A couple, I'm sure you can probably guess. Um, <laughs> but what it is, is a chance for, to have a great night for a great cause to have a laugh at us and rock on. And we're going to be playing some anthemic tunes uh, from, uh, from sort of like all throughout. There's, there won't be anything there that you don't know, um, but we'll try not to ruin them uh, as best we possibly can. Yes, we will be singing, uh, but we'll also be having some guests coming down and doing some tunes as well, which will, be, which will be great. So all I can say is please come down and support. You'll have a great night. Whatever happens, you'll have a great night. I encourage drinking, 
because our <laughs> bum notes will then uh, sound a lot, lot better, uh, or my bum notes, I should say. Um, but we're rehearsing hard. We're rehearsing tomorrow, me and Henry. We've done once a week for the last three weeks. We're rehearsing again tomorrow. And say it quietly, Moose, but we're sounding all right. We're not sounding <laughs> badly <laughs> at all. So, so um, this, is, this is mildly encouraging. But it will be a good night. And it's at the 100 Club on the 1st of September. Uh, £30 a ticket. If you want a ticket, go to a, uh, a website called We Got Tickets. We Got Tickets.com. Search for Daggers and Henry. And we're live and loud on the 1st of September at the 100 Club. And I hope to see you guys there. I hope you're going to come. Buy your tickets. I've sent you the link. Moots, if you're not there, and given your hair, there's no <laughs> one better to mosh along. To, to some of the things that we're going to be doing, and there's a, there's one there's going to be one or two surprises, not only in guests but also in our playlist too. When you say surprises, you don't mean dragging me up to warble a few out. No, that is categorically <laughs> not going to happen. We're going to have well going to have security on the stage to make sure that after three lagers, you don't want to come on <laughs> and sing for us. Oh, fantastic! So we'll put all the details up on the across all of our social media, our Bless you. YouTube, Thank everything. You. And uh, we shall give it a good plug because we've got a little bit of a run-up at it. So uh, we'll make sure that uh, 300 people are jammed in the venue. There will be touts outside trying to hustle Oh, God, tickets. will there ever. <laughs> this will be the hottest ticket in town on Thursday, the 1st of September. <laughs> <laughs> and what I can I... say is there's no, cricket, there's no cricket that day. There's no cricket that day. So um, it's the day after the final group game in the hundred and just before and the day before the eliminators so uh we're hoping like I say one or two from the cricketing world will be down there supporting us as well no names yet but <laughs> i know i know of four big names who are gonna who are gonna be supporting us and uh and throwing stuff at us probably uh so uh, so yeah they're gonna be coming down too it's um, like a lot of show for us there 98 not out live from the hundred club that night <laughs> I tell you, we've got we've got DJ coming down. Uh, that's all sorted. He's uh, he's going to be whipping the crowd into a rockular frenzy. Uh, but but, I, but if you want to get up and get dressed to impress, then come down and 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 you know stick the leathers on and stick you know the studded <laughs> wristbands on and the boots and the, and all of that sort of stuff. We want people to come and have a great time, and that's what you know. It, come and have a laugh at us uh, because we're go- we'll be taking it fantastically seriously by the way <laughs> uh, because we want to be good. We want to put on a show. Um, but I've got a meeting down at the Hundred Club very soon. <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna turn me down but you know it's the things like we want lasers and fire and and you know <laughs> we want to do a guitar solo on the back of a hovering horse or something i don't know uh but you know just sort of the drummer going upside down like motley crew used to do all of that sort of stuff it won't happen but we're going to try and do as may, as big a rock show as we possibly can if you don't ask you don't get a sound motto correct correct <laughs> Maybe you should arrive by airship and then kind of like descend by oh, ropes. Would have <laughs> you should some of the some of the meetings. You know when me and Henry are rehearsing, uh, and we and we usually book a rehearsal studio for about four hours, an hour of which are stupid ideas that we come up <laughs> with. <laughs> hey, you know what we should do? We should X, Y, and Z. So uh, so yeah, you know it's, it's yeah arrive on Harley's. Uh, down the stairs of the hundred club or whatever it may be, but uh, but yeah, it, it's uh, should see you should, All I will say is that the uh, the yellow specs will be worn on that <laughs> night because because the thing is I can't see otherwise the prescription, um, and um, and I, I find it hard enough to find the notes that I want anyway without without not wearing my prescription glasses. Uh, but if there is one reason to go, it's the boots that I'm wearing. Ooh. My boots of epic proportion. <laughs> they are just sensational. You're going to crack up. It's so funny. <laughs> well, we look forward to that 1st of September. And, of course, in the meantime, seeing you on at the 100 with the yellow specs and at the blast with the clear lenses. With so the clear lenses, yeah. We've got, we've, got a big week. Uh, we've got a big week of, of cricket. Roses match, London derby, um, and then we're at Sussex on the Friday and um, and then uh, then we've got a couple more Worcester Taunton uh, Worcester Durham Taunton um, 
and then the women's test over in Taunton as well at the back end of this month. So yeah, busy time and oh, this is as you know, Moose, you know me. I, this is the bit I love. I just love it. Absolutely oh. love it. Well, I love you as well. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Totally is a mutual appreciation society. <laughs> we'll wrap it up there, but um, what a massively busy schedule. So we really appreciate you joining us, Charles. Um, all the best with everything, and we'll see you at the 100 Club on the 1st of September. Great talking to you guys, and anytime you uh, want to chat cricket, I'm always up for it on Phoenix FM. <laughs>